software called Synchro, which is what people use in North America to develop signalized networks and look at how long the greens, the yellows, and all reds talk to each other. And so what we have changed the district was their, their, their drought model when we expanded on take a look at what we could do with lower cap. Um, this particular simulation that you're looking at is, is uh, one of our situations for the, the year 2012. It's the afternoon rush hour. Um, the, um, uh, the important thing to remember here, this is a, uh, we do a one hour analysis whenever we're as a traffic engineer, but what I'm showing you is a 10 minute video clip that's been sped up four times, so we're actually looking at a, a two and a half minute video clip. The cars are all different colored. The blue ones are making a left turn, the yellow ones are making a right turn. Uh, white cars are the ones going through, and blue cars are vehicles that are basically entering or exiting the road network in, in, in different mid block sections where they may be a driveway. Uh, in this particular 10 minute clip, we're looking at the southbound right when you're coming down Cap Road and showing that the cars can keep making a right turn with the, the, the dual right that's there right now. Some often, some municipalities permitted to, uh, uh, to be right turn on red only, uh, so no right turn on this, and that's what this particular does. What this particular situation does, it penalizes the rain drive to the, uh, to the benefit of uh, Cap Road. something scenarios. Uh, we, we developed, we looked at base case do nothing, and then we looked at what I call four do something scenarios to really try and improve things. And the plan we put together is a, is a blending of what we call option three and option four. And the key elements uh, that have been talked about before is basically the extension of curling by a new signal at the intersection at uh, Cap Road. It continues all the way east towards McGuire. In this particular simulation, we show it continuing on as an access road to garden. I mentioned before about the opportunities for future expansion. If you as a community decide to, to continue to work eastwards, you have an opportunity to expanding this grid network, which is basically what we're recommending for your community. Um, one of the big challenges, of course, is all the traffic that's going to be developed on the west side of, of, of Curling, how do they get out? We actually, somewhat to my surprise, found that one of the biggest benefits to making this plan work is by allowing an opportunity for vehicles to go from the west side of Curling to the Cross, and then finding new opportunities to get on to Marine Drive to go east towards uh, Marine Drive Corridor, Cap Hall, uh, City of North Vancouver, for example, is it, it has a great pressure on the intersection of Cap Road and Marine Drive. And by doing that, it allows us to sort of uh, make the signals uh, uh, operate a little more efficiently. The way we're running all the signals, uh, they, they operate on the cycle length, it's like a, it's a big clock. In this case, we uh, we go from 0 to 75 seconds as our cycle for all the small signals. And the big one in Marine Drive and Cap Road is operating at 150 seconds, so we can uh, allow for some simulation and simulation between that. Uh, you'll note that the uh, HOV link, in case any of you are looking for it, is not in here right now. And, and the reason for that is, is that the normal signal software, where we don't, uh, are unable to, uh, to model these HOV or bus slates. Uh, the reality is, is that the traffic in was very low compared to the general purpose lanes. And so we intentionally, well, in this case here, had we modeled them and all the regular traffic would have tried to use it. So we're basically simulating so many of those fire call worst case scenario. Um, and uh, but, um, Uh, and of course, as you know, 